Hey everyone, Lenny Reed, Dynamite Diesel. And I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about uh, how to properly tune your vehicle. So as you can see behind me, I've got a dyno. And a dyno is not just something that you uh, drop 40 bucks, enter a dyno day, pound on your chest, tell your buddies you made 600 horsepower, even though your truck runs like it's got 380. That's not what the origination of dynos was. That is kind of what it's been marked as here in the last decade or so. Dyno competitions are fun, I get it, but when they're used properly, we take RPM, uh, wheel speed, the inertia or the load, try and figure out what your vehicle is actually capable of from bottom of the RPM to the top of the RPM. A good peak number doesn't necessarily indicate anything about how the vehicle is gonna operate. If you make 600 horsepower, but it's only for a 200 RPM window, and the basic average of the curve is 375 to 400, you really should be bragging about your 400 horsepower pickup, not your 600 horsepower truck. Uh, to make a big number on a dyno is one thing, but I really wanna stress the fact that the overall average of the curve is what you're after. There's a lot to know about how to set up a truck properly, and minimum dyno time is always gonna be, at minimum, like three hours. Dyno time's 95 bucks an hour, and I think you're gonna find that is pretty much like standard across the US. And if you're gonna be on a dyno for a few days, don't be surprised because with all of the EFI live tuning and HP tuning and all that stuff that's available, plus turbochargers, you got different turbine compressors. Excuse me, you got different compressors, you got different turbine housings, different brands, and all those things offer different levels of power at different engine RPM based on your cubic inch. Example, stock truck comes with 342s and has approximately a 32 to 33 inch tall tire. Going down the road in sixth gear, it loves 13 to 1500 engine RPM. It might not actually love it. We've actually done some things and by changing nothing more than just gears, going from those 342s to a 4.3, we're increasing the RPM, which is the amount of time that the, uh, that, that's the amount of revolutions that the motor actually does spin over. And by spinning it more frequently, you're pumping more air through the engine. It's gonna keep the engine cleaner. We've documented that, we've actually, uh, we've tested that. And I can tell you right now that even with all emissions intact, 430s compared to 342s, all the emissions problems with uh, EGR and soot getting all stuck in like the intake grids, all that stuff kind of uh, diminished. Did it absent 100%? No. Was it 90% better? Absolutely, it was 90% better. Uh, that being said, the turbocharger that come with 342s, variable vane, it's gonna have awesome throttle response on the, top, on the bottom end, and as you increase in RPM and wheel speed, the vanes start to open up and it gives it a larger feeling towards a bigger turbine housing. That variable vane geometry turbo will not live at 600 horsepower, but on a stock truck, great throttle response, great heat control, great smoke control, all those things are great. Do you need to spend huge money on huge turbos? Well, the factory didn't, but if you plan on making huge, huge power, then yes, you do. Um, like for instance, right here, we've got a 98 millimeter compressor wheel. We've got a massive turbine housing on the back of it, and that's fed into a compound setup. Uh, reason that it's compound is because the little guy has a much smaller compressor wheel and it's gonna offer throttle response off the bottom. So when you've got an automatic pickup truck with a torque converter, it helps get the thing up in boost. So when we leave the line, it stages and it goes much, much easier than just on a single 98. Why is this important to you? Well, because we see so many times people call up and they complain, hey, your injectors are super smoky, they're super hot, they're super this, they're super that. Terrific. And then we go backwards. What have you done to the truck? And let's start from there and work our way to, yeah, now you finally put injectors in it and there's a, there's a problem. Um, a lot of the things that we see, people in the diesel industry do not love putting gears in their truck. I understand it's expensive, but it saves transmissions and it saves crankshafts, it saves connecting rods by doing it properly. If you put the right amount of gear in it for the amount of RPM you plan on spinning and the amount of air that your engine has to offer, then you're gonna end up with a motor that lives much longer and gives you optimum throttle response feel, comes off the stoplights better, tows your boat better, it's way less smoky, things like that. This truck, for instance, when it goes to the UCC, we run three different gear ratios. One gear ratio to show optimum horsepower on the dyno, one gear ratio to go sled pulling with, 
and then another gear ratio in the differentials to actually go down the track and drag race. Why can't you do it with one? Well, because those are three different jobs, three different duty cycles, and they all three require different load and RPM matches. So our four tens that we drag race with, they work great. They get the truck off the line extremely fast. We've got it going through the traps at the right RPM. So that's why we use a 410. If we try to run 410s in our rock wheel differential for sled pulling, that's too much wheel speed and we can't pack it. So we've got to use a deeper gear than that to go sled pulling with. And on the dyno, since the dyno doesn't offer load increasing as wind resistance comes at you, when you're going 150 miles an hour, you stick your head out the window, it blows your head off. Uh, your dog loves doing it at 50 miles an hour. He, he, his lips are flapping and all that. He, he digs it, but he doesn't do it at 150. So as wind speed increases, so does vehicle workload. That being said, we don't have that vehicle workload in a static room where there's no wind resistance coming at us. So the dyno has to be not manipulated, but we've got to, if we're going to make peak power numbers, we've got to kind of trick things into making those peak power numbers. Now, for all of you that have 342s, that might be a great dyno gear, but when you're towing your 26 foot long fishing boat that's got huge girth, huge mass, and all your buddies and their coolers, is a 342 really right for you? Well, probably not. I'm sure that a 373 or a 410 would actually do that job much better and potentially even get you better gas mileage because you're actually starting to duty cycle the motor at a more happy spot rather than loading it so hard that it's in its like torque all the time and it just wants to grunt the poor transmission to death. So where does this leave us? Well, injectors, we sell several different sizes of injectors based on what you're trying to do. The injectors that are in this will pump approximately 600% more fluid than a stock injector at a certain set point. Does that mean that since these are in our high dollar truck, these are the best injector on the planet? Not for your situation unless you're looking for 2000 horsepower and greater than. If you're trying to tow your boat, this could be the worst injector on the planet for you. A 50 or a 90 horsepower injector would be much, much happier in your motor. You'd have less crankcase dilution in the oil, all those things. So that's something that we need to consider when you're choosing that. Fuel pumps. There's all sorts of different like varieties of fuel pump configurations. You can do a single 10 millimeter pump to get you about 750 horsepower. You can do a single 12 millimeter pump that'll get you about 1,000 horsepower. If you need more than 1,000 horsepower, then you've got to go to multiple like fuel injection pumps. That'll help feed the massive injectors at all of the RPM that we're trying to spin. That being said, back to our turbos. If we didn't have turbos that big and a super efficient air to water intercooler, we would not need three fuel pumps. We would not need the 600% over injectors. We wouldn't need all that stuff. The truck that we use to tow this truck all the way out to Indiana is a 50 horsepower over injector, a very small tow tune, 373 gears, 30,000 pounds rolling down the road and everything works great. If I put 342s in that same truck, it hates it. Horrible gas mileage, it's always under load. The poor transmission's not happy. The motor's going around, but not very circular. It shakes itself to death, just doesn't work well. Um, if I put a little bit taller tire on the exact same truck, I'm pretty much wishing that I had 410s in it. So again, based on what you're trying to do and the elevation you live at, how much power you're trying to make, all of those things need to be considered when you're putting together your package for your truck. Uh, if we can help you at all, feel free to call us at 208-209-3214. You can always visit our website, www.dynamitediesel.com. And uh, again, hope you're having fun with your truck. Catch you later.